You know you're in a bad relationship when you find yourself relating to rap songs about domestic violence. About a year ago, I was driving along on the 8 and found myself actually tearing up because the lyrics from that shitty Eminem song, Love the Way You Lie, were hitting a little too close to home. Upon realizing that my relationship had basically become a cliche for codependency, I decided to call it quits with my ex-con boyfriend. My strategy going in was to use the Band-Aid approach. I wanted it to be quick and easy. Then I remembered that this was the fourth time I had tried to break up with this guy, and somehow he always persuaded me to change my mind and give him another chance. I decided seeing him in person was too risky, so I broke up with him over the phone instead. If you ever find yourself with someone who won't let you break up with them, I highly recommend this strategy. <laughs> Post-separation, two months had gone by, and I felt fantastic. The backlash I had to deal with from the phone breakup was minimal. I was single and free. I thought I had made a clean break and put the wreckage of our horrible relationship behind me. I was even dating other people. Then the incident happened. I was getting ready to spend a guilt-free night with friends, something he would have never let me do. I took a quick shower, got out, and checked my phone. I had 38 missed calls in the span of 20 minutes and several text messages with supportive sentiments like, everything is gonna be okay, and call me if you need to talk, I love you, and I'm so sorry this happened. I started to freak out, but I rationalized that my friends were probably just confused or overreacting. I called my friend Rihanna to tell her everything was fine, and she picked up ha after half a ring and said, oh my God, honey, where are you, are you okay? I replied, Rihanna, what the fuck is going on? Why does everybody think I'm dying or something? She got quiet and said, wait, you don't know? Know what? I have no idea what you're talking about. There was a long pause, then she said, dude, Jess, someone posted naked pictures of you all over Facebook. For exactly five seconds, I let myself shut down completely. I thought about just staying home, putting on PJs, canceling my Facebook account. I would just pretend it never happened and become a shut-in and never leave my house again. I could even start a home business custom painting miniature cat figurines and never have to put on real <laughs> shoes again. Or a bra. <laughs> After letting the tape play out on option one, lay down and give up, I decided my only real course of action was option two, the find a way to take that motherfucker out by any means necessary option. <laughs> I went into Kill Bill mode and said, where are you, Ree? There it is. <laughs> I'm up here at Twig, she said. Okay, stay right there, I'm on my way. I grabbed my laptop, jumped in my car with my hair still wet. My phone kept ringing with concerned callers the whole ride there. When I pulled up, Rihanna was standing outside on the corner smoking a cigarette, and somehow another one of our friends had shown up and they were talking about the pictures already. I screeched up to the curb and said, get in. Then I parked five feet away. <laughs> we got out and I set up camp at her table inside. When we sat down, um, before I could bring myself to face the damage, I forced myself to ask her, how bad is it? To put it gently, it was worse than I could have ever possibly imagined. There's a reason this attack happened two months after we broke up, because that's how long it must have taken that motherfucker to plan this. I've constructed a breakdown of the steps he took to make this happen. One. He created multiple fake Facebook accounts using phony names and pictures. He even went so far as to create fictitious work and school info. Two, using these fake profiles, he infiltrated all of my major groups of friends, sending friend requests to everyone I've ever been friends with, along with everyone else in that network. Three, since most people usually accept friend requests from people they already have mutual friends with, his stupid plan worked, and he was able to friend virtually every single person I've ever met. Four, then in one coordinated attack, he bombed Facebook with naked pictures of me. 
Since he was able to get everyone to accept his friend request, he could poke pi post pictures directly to each person's wall, which meant all of their friends could see it too. I know. <laughs> it's really confusing and fucking psychotic, and if you don't go on Facebook, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but think of it this way. My family members, childhood friends, co-workers, ex-boyfriends, current guy I was dating, loose acquaintances, and current friends had s naked pictures of me sent directly to them, and in the process, the entire internet saw me naked. Awesome. <laughs> then there were the captions. Some of it was what I expected. Fortunately, my ex is stupid, so the majority of his <laughs> insults were lackluster and obvious. The captions denounced me as a slut and a drug addict. Thankfully, the majority of my friends are sexually active drug users, so... <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't bother me. But what my ex lacked in creative slander, he made up for an unabashed cruelty. To the man I had just started dating, he wrote on his wall that I had HIV and I used to be a prostitute. To one of my former boyfriends who I was still good friends with, he wrote that I had cheated on him when we were together. After the sympathetic calls from friends stopped, I would end up fielding angry and confused calls for weeks from boys demanding explanations for various untruths which were destroying my credibility and damaging my relationships. Remember, I'm finding all of this out inside of a busy coffee shop. And our outraged, loud discussion quickly caught the attention of other patrons. But I was too pissed to keep my voice down or care about onlookers. Reading all that awful shit he wrote about me propelled me further into take that motherfucker down mode. Then I spotted a squad car in the parking lot across the street and started running frantically towards it. Running up to the officer to the officers, I hysterical panted my emergency. At this point, I was in this like weird blacked out rage, but it sounded something like this. My ex trying to ruin my life. He posted naked pictures of me. Internet must be illegal, right? <laughs> the two confused male police officers said they would look into it. One got on the radio to inquire about whether or not posting naked pictures of someone on the internet was even illegal. The, co the other cop awkwardly tried to make conversation with me by asking if I could describe the pictures. <laughs> Followed by the statement, just so you know, I'm married, so I'm, I'm not like being a creep or anything. <laughs> I gave the vaguest possible description I could, only to be asked if in any of the pictures I was spread eagle. <laughs> I responded by laughing uncomfortably. <laughs> Finally, the cop that had been on the radio came back and said that he was sorry to inform me that my ex didn't actually break any laws by posting naked pictures of me without my consent. Since he had consent to take them, they were his property and he could do whatever he want with them. Technically, he could repost them every single day, and I would never be able to do anything about it. If I wanted to, I could hire a lawyer and try and sue him for defamation of character, but there was no guarantees that I would win. I told the cops that our relationship had a history of domestic violence, and couldn't they at least charge him for physically assaulting me in the past? But that was a dead end, too. Apparently, a woman has to formally press charges within 48 hours of being hit, or she forfeits her right to pursue legal action. I remembered calling the police one night after he strangled me until I almost lost consciousness. The female officer said they would send someone out to take my statement so I could formally press charges. Instead, I chose to remain loyal. All my feminist slogans I so strongly believed in were reduced to empty rhetoric, and at that moment, I went from being an empowered, self-assured woman and evolved into a stereotype of the pathetic, battered housewife. 
Fearful of sending him to jail, I backed out and said, N- no, I don't, I don't want to press charges. That's okay. Don't Just don't send anybody. Never mind. She responded impatiently with, well, honey, if he hits you, why wouldn't you want to press charges? Now, standing in the cold outside of Twigs, I was being asked that same question by a cop who just questioned me about being spread eagle. Why hadn't I pressed charges at the time? I would love to stand here and tell you that I was afraid for my life or that he held me prisoner and brainwashed me. I wish I could claim that he was completely to blame and I was merely a traumatized, innocent victim, but that wasn't the case. The truth is that pressing charges would have terminated a relationship that I wasn't willing to let go of yet. It meant walking away from something broken that I was convinced I could still fix. It meant getting well when I still loved being sick. Up until this point, everything that happened between us took place behind closed doors. But public humiliations are always worse than private ones. I discovered that my rigid insistence that I didn't give a fuck what other people thought of me was total bullshit. Despite despite the discouraging news that the cops couldn't charge him, I wasn't about to give up my quest for revenge. He had humiliated me on multiple levels, but the most embarrassing aspect of the whole experience is that it was publicly revealed that I was stupid enough to let such a fucking douchebag see me naked in the first place. (laughs) So I set the wheels of vengeance into motion. (laughs) One, I conducted extensive research on the United States Department of Justice. Two, I contacted state officials, lawyers, the sheriff's department, and the district attorney. Three, documented various conditional release violations. Four, had his ass served with papers by the sheriff. Five, organized an entourage and scheduled a court date. Six, charged into the courtroom and handled it like a pro. On January 10th, 2012, my efforts were rewarded when I was granted a one-year domestic violence restraining order against William Williams. Yeah, my ex has the same first and last name. (laughs) No wonder he's so fucked up. I know it doesn't sound like much, but when you're on federal parole, a restraining order counts as a violation and can land your ass back in prison to serve the remainder of your sentence, like my ex did. So in the end, a bunch of people saw me naked and it was really humiliating. But the horror really only lasted about a week, and then someone posted a video of a talking dog, and everyone pretty much forgot about it. (laughs) Luckily, shame brought on by the internet is pretty short term, unlike the time my ex will be spending as a guest of the state. Jessica Ruins.